Greetings YouTube and welcome to The, the Future, Future of, of Gaming! gaming. At least that's what Sony would have you believe. Me personally, I just see it as the next generation of console. Better tech, obviously, but just the next step. When I first heard they were going to do this video, my first impressions were... We're probably going to get about maybe 10 or 12 games, if we're lucky. And we're probably not going to get a look at the console, and even if we do, it'll be a glimpse towards the end. I wasn't that far off. I don't want this video to take forever. You can just go away and watch Sony's video yourself if you want. So I'm just going to fly through it and make some observations on each bit of it as I go. First up, Grand Theft Auto V. Obviously, this game has been released for ages and ages now. And the graphics in this video do look like current gen. And that's because they are current gen. But apparently we are going to get it on the PS5. And GTA Online is also going to be free to console owners as well. So I guess that's good if you're a big fan of the game. Me personally, I kind of checked out of this series around San Andreas. But I get why people still like it. The remaining 25 titles are all new to the next console. First up, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Following up from the earlier Spider-Man game, which heavily borrowed from Batman Arkham. It's not the only game to do that for its combat system. This game is going to be following Miles Morales instead. The trailer is pretty short, but it's pretty sweet. The visuals are good, obviously, they bloody should be. And we get some snippets of gameplay. Again, not too much, probably because they haven't finished the game yet. But it's enough to give us an idea what to expect. Gran Turismo 7. I'm not a big sports game fan or driving fan, but these visuals are pretty damn awesome. They're brilliant. I, it perfectly shows off what the console can do. And this is apparently on the PS5 specs. Towards the end, we get extended gameplay footage rather than snippets. You know, individual pieces taken from different places. We get an extended race throughout a track and you get to take in all the lovely details. I'm not one normally for graphics and sound. I'm much more a gameplay type person. It is pretty difficult to ignore how awesome it looks though. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Dimension jumping. Basically, that's the main selling point of this. Other than that, it's typical Ratchet and Clank gameplay. Not very many weapons and no crazy ones. But yeah, the dimension hopping is pretty sweet. They, the, apparently, you're going to be able to use this system to hop directly between planets instead of having to, you know, go through that tedious loading screen normally. This game looks set to take full advantage of the PS4's solid state drive. Project Athia. This basically reminded me of a superhero game, except the powers look to be nature-based. It's very limited as the gameplay doesn't show off much. We get the vines shooting out and a lot of special effects and whatnot. It's very limited, but it looks pretty cool. Stray. I think you're playing as the cat. Uh, Robot Society, it's cutscene only is this entire trailer, so it's hard to get a read on it. My personal inclination is to believe it's probably a puzzle platformer. I mean, I'm guessing it's not a combat game, but I don't know. That's just my feeling of it. It's hard to tell from this decent length cutscene, but it is nevertheless a pre-rendered cutscene. Quick look at the PS5 tech and controller, you know, the key features. I've covered that before, I'm going to kind of skip over that. Returnal. A repeating death system? Makes me think we're going to get a Soulsborne game here. Except it's going to be on an alien planet, and it's going to be a third-person shooter. Now that's unusual. I don't actually know of any Soulsborne game that is a shooter. It's just something... Usually... Usually the game threatens you up close, you know, it it insists you get in close and slaughter them toe to toe to increase the threat level. I don't know if this is a Soulsborne game, but it's going to have to be a bloody difficult one because your gun gives you a bit of an advantage, you know what I mean? Sackboy, a big adventure. 
It's definitely inspired by Little Big Planet. You can see all the things like the bounce pads and the swing points and the whole art style just screams Little Big Planet. It's not by Media Molecule though. And Media Molecule have a, shall we say, a talent for injecting their games with um, charm. There's a certain charm to Media Molecule games that Little Big Planet 3 lacked, which is something they didn't do. This is clearly a platforming game. Whether you'll actually be able to make anything in the game is, uh, I don't know, the trailer doesn't really show it off. It just shows off the art style and it's pitch perfect for Little Big Planet. Destruction All Stars. Basically, I'm thinking Destruction Derby with a few nifty vehicle upgrades. Defensive and offensive, it looks like. There's one shot where the car has sort of armor on it. There's another one where the car sort of has a, a saw blade mounted to it. We'll see. I, I generally find that games of this kind of ilk don't really attract my attention. Again, I'm not really a big driving fan. But if they put in some nifty, as I say, nifty offensive and defensive powers, it might be interesting. Kenner, Bridge of Spirits. This one attracted my attention for two reasons. First of all, I love the look of it. It's very pretty, very cute is this game, and I like it. Secondly, I kind of like how the combat is shown off. You have things like shields and offensive powers and whatnot. I like the look of this one. I'm going to keep an eye out for it. It looks like a, a fairly standard adventure platformer. I, I, I just like the look of it. Goodbye Volcano High. Honestly, I wasn't quite sure what to make of it, given the title. And now that I've seen the trailer, I'm even more in the dark. It has this cartoony art style. And it's very, very hard to tell if the trailer is even made up of gameplay or if it's just all pre-rendered. It does have this, the characters have this uh, fantasy type design to them. I get the feeling that this might be, a, it's probably a character story driven uh, type of game. But again, it's hard to tell what, is it gonna be like a graphic novel? I guess that would make sense given the trailer, unless it's not showing us stuff, but it's really hard to tell. It's hard to read is this one. Oddworld Soulstorm. You can never have too many Oddworld games, in my humble opinion. It looks all 3D and fancy. And not only that, it retains the two-dimensional gameplay. So you get the old school feeling with the new fancy graphics. I like what I see. Uh, huge numbers of Madokans following Abe around and getting slaughtered, obviously. Fair few explosions and lasers and all that kind of stuff. Some cutscenes, which I'm guessing is from the game. Quite a bit of gameplay here, little snippets, but nevertheless, I like it. Ghostwire Tokyo. Uh, basically, first person, magic, ghosts. In Tokyo. I don't really need to know any more than that. The gameplay looks pretty awesome to me. I don't even really care why you're doing this. I normally, I'd, I'd need some rhyme or reason for something going on. Here, I think, the I, I think the gameplay trailer did its job. I'm interested. Also a bit spooky in places. Jet, the far shore. This game is another hard to read one from the trailer. It seems to be people, I think, abandoning Earth in a spacecraft, jetting off to far distant alien worlds, but exactly what gameplay is going to be featured in it, it's really hard to tell. It's got this like sapia type tone over the beginning of it. It's got its own unique art style. I kind of like the look of it. It's just, it's difficult to get a read on what the gameplay is going to be like for this one. Godfall. I'll be honest, the combat kind of reminds me of God of War if it was a teensy bit clunkier. I, that's really my thought as I was watching the combat in this, and there's quite a bit of combat, and it's all flashy and swords and shields and whatnot. It's just... It's, I, I just came away thinking, yeah, this looks okay. I wasn't particularly enthused by the trailer, though. It's just uh, a lot of nondescript characters in armour beating the crap out of each other. And that's kind of all I got from this. 
Solar Ash. This game has an attractive art style. I love the look of it. It's just a pity that there's not much here. You get a bit of gameplay and some scenes and it, not much else. It's it's a bit nondescript is this trailer. You, you get a feeling for it. It's a platformer. I'm guessing given the fact that she has a sword, it's going to be a fighting platformer. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Fury, except you're not as bloody slow as that guy moving to the next boss. I don't know if that's what's going on here. I just, I would have liked a little bit more. Hitman 3. It opens with a pre-rendered cutscene, and I thought, oh, really? We're not going to see gameplay? And then we saw gameplay, including Agent 47 climbing a building. I mean, a whole building, and we're not talking like a one-story bungalow. We're talking a skyscraper. Get some little snippets from other things here and there, but I think at this point, we know what to expect from Hitman, don't we? Astro's Playroom. I'll be honest, seeing as how we've already seen the Sackboy platformer, this comes off as a bit lacklustre. Honestly, Astro's game probably should have come before Sackboy's. It might have had more of an impact otherwise. I'm not quite sure though why Sony keeps on pushing Astro games out every so now and again. Especially when they release a new console. It seems like every time they release a new console, they have to put an Astro, an Astro Bot game out. It's... With the PS4, they had that thing with the PlayStation camera, uh, and then they brought the VR game out, and then they had the, the Astro Bot Rescue game or something, and now a new PS5 is coming out, and now we're getting another Astro Bot game. It, it's, it's, are they trying to turn this into, into a mascot? Because I don't honestly think the Astro Bot is going to reach the likes of Sonic and Mario. Oh, by the way, the game is a platformer. It looks okay. Little Devil Inside, a very stylized game. I love the visuals. The gameplay looks like you're going to be monster hunting and some very weird monsters. It looks awesome. Also, I love the sense of humor. The sense of humor comes across in this trailer. I like that on top of it. It gives you, it gives the sense that the game has character and that's sometimes quite hard to get across in a trailer without actual characters saying things to each other. So, very good trailer, this. Definitely interested. NBA 2K21. Again, I'm not a fan of sports or driving games. But this trailer was... How can I put this? A bit dull and uneventful. It's basically just a guy in a pre-rendered cutscene, bouncing a basketball around. I, it shows off the console's technical aspect, I suppose. But then other games in this video do that already. Kind of makes me wonder why they bothered including it. Bug snacks. Um, bugs looking like food and other animals eating the food, bugs, and their body appendages turn into the food that corresponds to the book. I, 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 I don't get this. I, do, I, do, I don't get this. Is it, a, is it a puzzle platformer? Or is it like an adventure game? I, it, it looks really weird. I kind of like it. I just don't know what to make of it. Demon Souls. I remember playing this back in the day. And holy shit, that looks epic. That looks awesome. Actually, almost every frame of this trailer looks awesome. I know it looks pre-rendered, but like quite a few other games on this list, Demon Souls is a game that's been out for a while. So I, I'm pretty confident when I say that they're just going to remaster and re-engineer the whole thing from the ground upwards. God damn, it looks awesome. I hope they take out some of the frustrating mechanics, though. I mean, that light and dark thing for each region used to kind of irritate me a little bit. And I hope they get rid of that goddamn, you know, when you drop dead, you lose, your, your health gauge is cut in half. I hated that. Please get rid of it. Deathloop. I thought this trailer was pre-rendered to start with, but no, it's, it's pretty much all gameplay. And it very much feels like Dishonored. 
I don't know if it's trying to be like Dishonored, but it made me immediately think of that. Looks awesome. Every time you drop dead, you get sent back to the beginning. So as the trailer itself points out, it's a case of you learn a little bit each time. Two assassins going at it. I'm presuming you play as the guy. I'm presuming you don't get a choice of which assassin you play as. Or maybe that's just my mistake. I don't know. It looks awesome in either case. Village. Resident Evil 8. I feel like you got those two things the wrong way around. But whatever. It starts off looking pre-rendered. And then we get snippets of gameplay later on. A snowy dark forest. It's all spooky. Ooh, she's just telling a story. Yeah, whatever. The visuals are awesome in this. It very much comes across as a game trying to creep you out. Which is what I suppose you want from Resident Evil. Uh, the developers have already said that some Resident Evil purists are going to be really bloody annoyed with them. Because apparently this game is going full on with the occult thing. Kind of like maybe Resident Evil 7 tried to sort of lean towards. Because traditionally Resident Evil has been virus, bioweapons, big global conglomerate company, etc. It, it's all been about that. So this is going to be a bit of a break. We'll see how it is. I hope it lasts a little bit longer than Resident Evil 7. And I don't doubt that it's going to take full advantage of the PlayStation VR. Pragmata. Pre-rendered cutscene. A robotic looking spacesuit. A girl. A holographic cat. A city that isn't a city. And I'm confused. Um, <laughs> this is another one of the games whose trailers don't really tell you much about the game itself. It'd be fine, I suppose, as a very, very, very short trailer for a film. But for a game, I'm just kind of left with a ton of questions. Not sure what to make of this one either. And finally, Horizon Forbidden West. I literally almost said Zero Dawn. I can't help it, okay? Horizon Zero Dawn. That's supposed to be the title. I'm just going to keep on calling this Zero Dawn 2, aren't I? In any case, the entire trailer is pre-rendered. In any of the other games, I'd be complaining about that, but this is a sequel. So we already know what to expect from Horizon, yeah? We, we get a flavour for the kind of things, including the elephants. The elephants. And uh, Aloy is also shown underwater with a breather underneath a crocodile. So underwater is going to be a thing. Also, different environments like deserts and whatnot. It's looking pretty awesome is this game and I can't wait for it. I'm obviously going to have to wait for it but I don't want to. And to finish off the video Sony gives us a look at the PS5 itself. I mean I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting to get a good look at it and they even pan round it and show different angles and even zoom up at one or two of the slots on the front. It's a surprisingly in-depth look. It's not just a still photo. I'm, I am honestly astounded. There is apparently going to be a standard edition and a digital-only edition. That edition basically doesn't come with a disk drive on it. So, uh, basically, I suppose if it's a teensy bit cheaper, but I don't expect for a moment that the disk drive is going to be the expensive part of this console. It's going to be all the other gubbins inside it. And both consoles are going to have that. I have just two questions. Firstly, does it have to stand up like that? Right, can you lay it down or does it have to stand up? It, it doesn't, it, from the shape of it, it doesn't look like it can be laid down. I I don't know if they've got some gimmick with the base or I'm not seeing something. But I kind of want to know. The second question is, all of those extras, do we get those with the console? I mean, I'm thinking not because it shows the console on its own without them. And then it shows them with them. So I'm thinking they're extras. But maybe they're going to do like a bundle with all those extra bits in it. And they're probably, if so, they're probably going to market that pretty heavily. Or do you have to buy them separately? I should imagine you can buy them separately. Just, I'm just curious about that last point. But can it stand up? Also, with regards to its appearance. Um, yeah, I think it looks like our toasted sandwich maker. It's even the same colour scheme. 
a minus some of the frilly bits and the blue lighting. It looks like our toasted sandwich maker. Maybe a bit less blocky than that, but it just reminded me of it. Okay, I'm going to stop wittering now. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe and share all that jazz. See you next time.